What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of the Blade Podcast, the podcast about film production and post-production and marketing. I am your host Lungi Lamayindi and welcome to a brand new episode. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a beginner's guide to color grading. So if you don't know what color grading is, listen up. I'm going to be sharing like a beginner's guide into what color grading is, what what color correction is and how you can learn to, to, to master color grading and just like the basics. And maybe if you guys like this episode, I'll make another more detailed podcast episode. OK, cool. So let's talk about color grading. If you don't know what color grading is, color grading is a process of um, fine tuning an image or a video for 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 a film or a series. This is a creative endeavor. It's a creative choice where image is manipulated in order to create a certain mood. For instance, an example is, I mean, you know, like when you watch a, a romantic movie versus a horror movie, they do not look the same. The horror movies usually more dark, more bleak, less colors, desaturated colors. Um, and a romantic movie might even have more bold colors like pinks and yellows and stuff like that. So obviously the difference between the two uh, uh, productions is that a horror movie is graded in a certain way and uh, a romantic movie is graded in a certain way. So I hope that's that's a good enough explanation, but I'm sure you guys get it. OK, so how does color grading work? So usually in a film production, uh, production will go shoot something and it will shoot something in raw. Um, raw means the, the, the footage is uncompressed or sometimes it's shot and log. And then when it's shot, it's give, it's edited. And then after being edited, when the picture is locked, it's handed over to a colorist. A colorist will do a color correction. So a color correction is basically fixing the shots that have been edited. Basically, they might be uh, adjusting the exposure, the contrast, the color balance and saturation just to make the shots look the same, you know, to match the shots. They, they st- that is when a colorist does color correction. That's the first step of color grading. So you have to do color correction first, and then you can start doing color grading. Color grading is a different process. It is when everything matches, all the footage matches, and then now you start to do creative uh, grades in order to make uh, a movie or a scene look look great or in, to, for it to invoke a certain feeling. Uh, people color grade in different programs. There is Premiere Pro, there is DaVinci Resolve, and there is Baselight. I personally prefer DaVinci Resolve because it's free and it's really, really powerful. So if you've ever wanted to to get into color grading, um, these are the things you need to know. So first of all, in order for you to color grade and actually make money as a colorist, you need to have a color grading suite. That's the first thing you need to do. So in order for you to have a color grading suite, you need to have a, and this doesn't mean you have to have an expensive suite. It just means you need to have a a computer that is good enough to be able to color grade on. So that computer needs to have at least um, 16 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of RAM. You need to have a GTX 1080 graphics card with at least eight gigabytes or even four. And um, you also need to have a, computer that works on an SSD so that it can work faster um, and a really good processor, preferably an i7 processor because color grading is a processor intensive uh, process. So, I mean, a computer like this will probably cost you around 10 to 15K. You can always go higher, but it all depends on your budget. So the first thing is you need to have a PC or a laptop or a Mac that has these specs, okay? The next thing you need when you are color grading, you need to be color grading in a dark room because the way uh, a screen looks when you uh, uh, color grading in a dark room, you are able to color grade correctly. You, you, you're you seeing the, 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 the colors as they are and you're not influenced by the environment. So that's why when pro colorists uh, work on uh, on their grades. They're usually working in a dark room, and sometimes they have uh, lights that are 60, uh, 6,500 Kelvin. 
So this is like a light that is pure white. And these lights are usually put behind the screen. Obviously, if you're working on a laptop and you go outside, you're not going to see the same thing as when you're inside your house where there's less light. You, you, you might grade something thinking you're making it look green, but you're actually making it, making it, blue, making it look blue. So that's why you need to create it in a dark room. And also you need a calibrated reference monitor. This monitor needs to be at least 10 bit um, because um, you need to make sure that when you're grading your footage, it looks the same across all the devices. That's why you need to have a calibrated, refer calibrated reference monitors. Uh, re reference monitor. These are not cheap. I mean, they're really expensive. Some of them are like cost from like... 10 grand sometimes you can get an oled tv which costs around 30k but i mean it all, all depends on your budget you have to have a calibrated reference monitor because you don't want to grade something and it looks green and then once that video is getting played in a different monitor it looks blue so a cal cal calibrated reference monitor helps you with color accuracy but it's not just that you need to have a dark room that is controlled light and a calibrated monitor yeah, so when you are color grading, the first step I say, as I said in the beginning, you're gonna have to do color correction. So when you get the edits, you're gonna fix the exposure, the contrast, color balance, saturation, and make all the shots look the same. So it looks like they're all shot in the same time. And then the next step now is for you to color grade. So usually a look for a film is decided before the movie shot. You will have to try create recreate that look uh, to in order to enhance a certain feeling in the audiences and to create a certain feeling in the scene. And you will do this by adjusting the highlights, the shadows, the mid-tones, the tints, and the color, temp color temperature. Another thing that you need to know in order to be great at color grading, you need to know a little bit about cinematography. You need to understand ISO, shutter speed, f-stops, and depth of field. Because usually when you're grading something, most of the professional shoots shoot in RAW. So when they shoot in RAW, when you bring that footage into DaVinci Resolve, you can change all of these uh, settings. You can change the ISO of the footage, the shutter speed, uh, the f-stops, and you need to know how to use these things. So, I mean, I know this is a very technical podcast, but this is just a basic brush up into what color grading is, what you need to know if you want to be a colorist, if you want to uh, get into color grading and learn how to 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 be self-employed or work as a colorist these are the few basic uh terms that you need to know basic things that you need to know so yeah i know this podcast is pretty technical but anyway i just wanted to talk about it because i think color grading is really 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 fascinating and it's something that i'm getting into something that i'm learning myself and i think it's yeah i think it's really 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 great so this is a basic beginner's guide to color grading and color correction. And okay, yeah, that's it, guys. Anyway, thank you for listening to the Blade Podcast. I'm your host, Lungile. If you have any questions, please email me. I have put my email in the show notes. Uh, tell me what you'd like me to talk about, uh, topics that you'd like me to touch up on, and things like that. Until next time, guys, stay safe and stay creative. And peace out.